All right, so we're gonna have a little fun today against Reanimator, which I did not know who it was. Now, I was coming off a nasty loss, actually lost to Death and Taxes game three, through eight turns, uh, drew a total of seven lands, two Force of Wills, uh, and a Snapcaster that I had to like kamikaze swords, their creatures, uh, and I drew zero <laughs> uh, actual uh, bodies or threats whatsoever. I was like, God damn, I can't believe it. it was just top deck after top deck. You know, I drew a ponder, but that was pretty much to get the Snapcaster just to save myself from not dying. It was a really tough loss, especially when that happens. It's never fun losing to matches where you know you're going to do well in, only to just like get crap after crap. But either way, uh, there probably could have been a few different lines, but overall, it was certainly some weird draws. Uh, so I was coming off that game and I was really uh, ready to rock. And of course, Here's this hand we got. It's uh, not amazing, but uh, it's good against combo because we got a force of will. Good against a creature if we want. Eventually, you could snapcast or do something cool. And these are threats that can be amazing depending upon who we're playing. And of course, as a lot of people talk about when it comes to back to basics, it is a card that can get pitched to force of will if not needed. <laughs> and every time I see someone mulligan, instantly I'm like, they're on reanimator or combo. Mostly reanimator because they love doing that. Uh, but they mulligan to five. Okay, and they did have a Chancellor. So I'm like, don't do turn one anything that's significant. And they didn't. They listened to me. It was nice. Okay, so here, uh, what I want to do is actually play, I guess it doesn't matter too much. I could probably play the, uh, I think I played Arid Mesa. That might give away less information about what I'm playing because if it was this, they're probably like, oh, they have swords. Although this could be like, well, if it was Maverick, I don't think Maverick plays that, but uh, it might be a little bit tougher to just, you know, figure out what deck I'm on because Aaron Mesa is a little less popular. That was my uh, choice behind that. And I still have this, so. And they are doing nothing. This is even better. All right. They're giving me time to draw cards that I need. I love. I believe I just played an island here. Yes. And remember, you always need to crack your fetch lands before this, before you, you know, cast your uh, card. Uh, I lost an entire match to, well, not an entire match. I lost one game, which was very pivotal. And um, here, I mean, there's no point in countering this because you know they're going to have something with the payoff. And here, I actually thought about spell piercing this. You know, here I am getting rid of my mana. I believe I got a... Uh, Okay, planes. I guess it didn't matter too much because this can get Tundra and then I'll have blue, blue, white, white, and white, white, blue. I actually thought about countering this. I believe I... Then I realized, I'm like, crap, they're targeting themselves. Should have done that before. It's very rare where I'll, like, I'll tap and untap because it gives away cards you have in your hand unless you're doing that purposely. Like if you didn't have one of those, you could tap and untap, but uh, I let it go because of that. Cool. So now they have uh, Chancellor and Animate Dead. Yep. Now they're going to animate dead, and we are going to spell pierce that, and of course, pay one. So now they have just uh, this in their hand. Cool. And the cool thing is that the opponent actually didn't give up, which is nice. You know, usually uh, not the worst draw in the world. Here, what I wanted to do, there was the opportunity or possibility of playing Narset, uh, where that's going to stop Faithless Looting, and then even if they drew a you know card I need to force, it would be uh, Force of Will, pitching back to basics. Here, what I decided to do is nothing, because I want to play Snapcaster. If they play something, I can pierce it. If not, I can just play him to start uh, attacking them, whatever it's going to be. Or maybe I did. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's funny when I say I'm going to do something and then do the complete opposite. Okay, so I did do that. Those are both good plays there, because like I said, I have um, backup protection, because uh, if they drew a discard, you know, card for me, it wouldn't matter, because uh, they'd get rid of Force Will, then next turn I can still Snapcaster and Pierce, unless they drew a Reanimate, which still they would only have two lands, so uh, either one is fine. Uh, I got some nice cards here, I went with the Force of Will. I remember there was a game where I played against Reanimator, and it was the same cards, like Spell Pierce and Force of Will. I remember I took Spell Pierce, I took the right one this time, I believe. Because they're going to be getting out of spell pierce range soon. So they did draw a uh, thought seize, so it's still not a big deal. That still does nothing because this is all, all they have in their hand. And we have a ponder we'll do here. Let's play this. And right as I was about to ponder there, right as, as I was about to say, you know, it, it's really great that my opponent hasn't conceded. And then they go ahead and concede. Uh, but either way, what I would have done there is played ponder. 
Uh, if I liked it, kept the top card, it could have shuffled the rest of the way. And my plan was going to be end of turn, Snapcaster, and pierce anything they do. Even if they don't do anything, I'm probably just going to play Snapcaster to start beating them down. And then have a lot of protection in my hand. Either way, that was Reanimator Game 1. It's always awesome to win Game 1 against Combo, especially Reanimator, because I personally don't care for the deck. It was the first deck I ever played in Legacy, just because it was, you know, I, I didn't even know Legacy was a format. I just found this deck, so I think it was on like a Central Magic, where people were raiding them, and they had a high rating. So I'm like, oh, this looks like fun. And then I realized it just folds too easily, and I didn't like that. But that's the story behind Reanimator. It's a love-hate type of deck, uh, but that's kind of the reason why I have a, a better idea of how to play against it and so on and so forth. But speaking of playing against it, let's move to the sideboarding action, and then we'll continue on to game numero dos. Reanimator, Reanimator on the wall. Who's the biggest, clunkiest combo deck of them all? We'll find out today. First and foremost, we like Forest of Negation. We like Vendillion Click. We love Containment Priest. We love Rest in Peace. We've talked about this before. These pretty much just hit Animate Dead. And do they bring any other enchantments? No, not that I can worry about. They have that one where it's like this destroy all artifacts during your upkeep. It's an enchantment, and there's no use in really doing that. If they want to they wanna kill that using that, that's fine by me. Surgical, obviously, is awesome. Spell Snare hits uh, Exhume and Animate Dead. I do not like bringing in Hydro Blast because it just hits uh, Faithless Looting. I'm not a big fan of Fluster Storm. And a Path to Exile can kind of like replace a Swords or, you know, because uh, I keep in like three, maybe four, but either way. Here I take out a Plains, they don't play Wasteland, so Arid Mesa can now either fetch uh, White Plains, can get Volcanic Island or Tundra, so that's why I keep in the Volcanic Island here. So take that out, let's see what else is bad. I don't like Jit in this. I'm not looking for card advantage with Stone Forest to shuffle it away and so on and so forth. We're going to take out Back to Basics here. And what else? Let's see. So since I am bringing in, let's do this. These are the cards I'm bringing in. Since I am bringing in uh, Path to Exile, I'll take one out at least, uh, maybe two, because I like this better because they're not gaining any life. You know, it's just kind of an upgrade. Uh, you don't need a ton of them. These are good if they're not playing Grizzlebrand, and sometimes it happens where they don't draw an Entomb. They just, you know, draw two, discard two, and they happen to have some random creature. I still think it's a really good one to have, uh, but that's kind of my opinion on that. Uh, Jace is good for bouncing. I've talked about this previously, whether you want to be on the plan where, like, this is kind of your last resort, if they have, like, Iona and you need to bounce a creature. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of it. Coming up soon, I'm going to be using a Little Teferi, where I'd probably have that instead because you can at least get card advantage out of it. Narset isn't the worst, uh, but I think what I did is one more plow. Let's look at everything else. Snare, Pierce, Ponder, Fluster, Brainstorm, three removal, uh, three stone forge. That looks good. This looks good. And here I can pretty much either take out a True Name or a Narset. Now, Narset actually isn't that bad. Yes. Uh, you're probably going to lose right away if they do their thing, but when the game extends out much longer, keep in mind that this kind of shuts off Faithless Looting. Uh, if they already have a ton of fatties in their hand, and you know it's probably not going to be a big deal, but it also shuts off Grizzlebrand. So if you can actually get this out and they go for Grizzlebrand, a veteran player obviously isn't going to draw cards into it. However, it will allow you time to maybe have Swords or Path to Exile that extra turn, maybe uh, use a Ponder, use a Brainstorm, look for some type of removal, whether it's going to be these three, uh, or these two here, and so on and so forth. Uh, and that's pretty much it. We got a ton of blue cards. We have a ton of hate with the two surgicals. We have the containment priest, the rest in peace, a ton of counters. Uh, Vendillion's great against combo. Uh, True name is probably the clunkiest card here. So if you wanted to take out one more and maybe replace it with a swords like this, you could do that as well. Uh, despite the fact that like these aren't good against Grizzlebrand, I still think they're overall good to have because a lot of other creatures, I know they play Archetype and Endurance, so if that's in there, that could be troublesome. Uh, usually once the creature is on play or in board, whatever you want to say, it is going to be challenging, but I've won a lot of games from... Uh, removing creatures once they're on the battlefield. So I don't mind having those. They're just great spot removal. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. That's kind of the risk you got to take when you're building uh, your deck and obviously taking out cards. Kind of like Hydro Blast, it's only going to hit, you know, uh, Faithless Suiting. If it does, it's great. But even if it does hit it on the way back, they can flash it back. So that's something to think about as well. But this is how I like doing it. Like I said before, I've had times where I'll keep in like one Jace or not. It will fluctuate every time. It's not a perfect thing. But this is a rough idea of what I'm doing for this game, this matchup. Now that that's done, let's move on to game numero dos. All right. So we have game number two. And we are going to be on the draw. We're going to be against re uh, Reanimator. And what I don't like about this, I've had many games where I'm very successful with only one land. But aside from that, you know, like let's say first turn, uh, end of turn, I could do Brainstorm maybe, you know, at the end of their turn. But 
Uh, that means they've already had two turns. I could keep up Spell Pierce, but uh, this one's very rough. Uh, I don't like this, and plus, like, this could be okay. This is just, you know, a way to win. Eventually, it's kind of slow. This is a removal that's not the greatest in the world. We're probably not casting that anytime soon. And this creature kind of just sucks. It's usually once everything smooths out, you, you bring it in, you play it to help win, or you pitch it to force. So with that being said, this hand is... Uh, it's kind of mediocre, and I know I can do better. You know, maybe I do, maybe I don't, but I decided to mulligan this one. Plus, I am on the draw, so I have the luxury of not losing too many awesome cards. Okay, this one is slightly better. It's still very slow. Um, I decided to go with it because I didn't want to go down to what would that have been? Seven, six to five. Five could have been interesting. Uh, like, once again, this is really slow. Like, if I'm getting the turn two, I'm going to win, which against Reanimator, you're probably not. Uh, unless they get some dinky uh, Chancellor in play, I could actually Swords that, but even if they have Discard, uh, I'm going to be in trouble there. So I decided to keep this one, and when it comes to this, I think I got rid of, uh, st let's see, either Stoneforge or Snapcaster, because... Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be playing Stoneforge anytime soon. Also, not gonna be playing this anytime soon. Uh, so it was, yeah, Stoneforge. That makes sense. No Chancellor trigger. Cool. So ironically enough, if I did have my other hand, remember it was like Brainstorm and uh, and Spell Pierce. Okay, so what I can do here is uh, I don't have any counter magic, so. I can't hold up, you know, Pierce. I could do that, which means, you know, maybe they won't go for it. That is a possible play. Uh, but considering this, let's see, if they if they do reanimate Exhum, wait, yeah, Exhum or uh, Animate Dead, they're probably getting Grizzlebrand. And once that's in play, you know, Swordsing it isn't going to be a big deal. I'm going to be in big trouble. So I think my best bet here is to actually uh, crack this. Get a Ponder. <laughs> Get a Ponder. Play Ponder. And uh, hope for the best, which uh, nothing really happened there. So that's just pretty much a shuffle. And we get a nice little, beautiful little planes. Uh, not very helpful. So now it's just like, well, maybe they won't have a reanimate in, or, uh, you know, or something like that. And judging by the looks of it, they had an exhum. Hey, they didn't have a reanimate. They had an exhum. Okay, draw seven. Sure. Okay, so at this point. This is one of those actual rare times where I will concede for information because I don't want them knowing I have this. I mm -hmm. uh, remember when it comes to reanimate, they sideboard very weirdly. Like I've had, it's obviously different for every person. I've had someone bring in four reverent silences for me. So like maybe if they saw this, that means like they're not going to bring any of those in because I do have rest in peace. So I actually did decide to concede here because if you think about it, like next turn, it, Regardless of what they take, this isn't going to matter. You know, they've already got their dude in play. Uh, they're going to draw seven more. Uh, this isn't going to be cast. You know, they could take this or they can take this. And even plowing this, that means they're going to draw seven more. Uh, I'm pretty much in big trouble. There's almost no way to win that. With that being said, that is a time I am con conceding just to conceal information about what I was playing. So uh, there was actually rhyme and reason to that. I had a very slow hand, and I pretty much knew at that point if I didn't get to turn two, I was going to be in big trouble and that's the risk I took because I didn't want to mulligan twice and maybe that's just me but either way we're going to go to game three where we are going to be on the play and uh yeah that's that so let's move on to game number three all right so reanimator won a game you know big deal it happens <laughs> okay uh let's see what we got here it's just not good enough in my opinion uh, I mean obviously this can nab a uh exhum and animate dead but that's assuming they're not going to be playing any type of of a discard. These are just going to be played late in the game. Uh, so let's mulligan this one too, once again. Okay. Well then, this hand is uh, better, at least. You know, I got a lot of cards I can play, and uh, I got mana. I can keep up Spell Pierce. I can ponder second turn, and then, you know, whatever. So uh, this hand seems pretty good. I believe I got rid of a Brainstorm just because I have two of them. Yep. So here, what I decided to do is uh, Island Nothing. I do have a Spell Pierce. Uh, if they play discard, I probably would uh, pierce that. Okay. Nothing. Wow. Okay. I did want to brainstorm here because I want to get the most use of my mana. Uh, if Even if I don't get a fetch land, I can always play ponder, shuffle it, and uh, you know do that as well. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> here pretty much the one card I don't want is uh, this is going to be getting better. Uh, let's see, and obviously these will get better. This is going to probably be want to played next turn. So the one card I don't want here is actually Valk. 
And the other card doesn't matter because what I'm going to do is uh, play this, shuffle, get a tundra. Now I can cast ponder with my island. And now I can, okay, and that's perfect. So on the bottom, I want planes and then blue to delta on top of that and then force of will on top of that. So now I can threaten swords and spell pierce and spell snare and fluster storm by keeping tundra open. And we put the polluted delta second because uh, when we play that, we're going to want to fetch because we didn't want the last card, which was the planes. It's very important. If you had put planes on top there, you would be time walking yourself and uh, that's not a good thing. Because now we have mana up for click. So uh, I don't like playing it at the, uh, what's the word, at the draw step because I'd rather see what they're going to do. I've made that mistake once and sometimes, uh, you know, it can cost you, especially for the fact that if I play click on their draw and say like they counter it or something happens, now I don't have spell pierce up, even though spell pierce is going to be difficult to use. Uh, it's just something I don't like doing. So at this point, they're either waiting for a really good time, they're playing around my soft permission, which is a very good plan. Uh, something I haven't seen from a reanimator player in quite a while, so I was actually very interested in uh, you know what was going on. But either way, I'm going to crack this. And I'm going to play click. <clears throat> I'm like, since they, didn't, they weren't doing anything, I actually did put them on red blast. They weren't cracking their lands, and uh, at this point I was kind of correct. Uh, that's fine. I have a snapcaster that I can beat them down. I certainly don't want to fight over that. Okay, it's not a bad card either. So here I can play Narset and I will still have Spell Pierce up or I can play Snapcaster and the turn Brainstorm. I believe I went with Snapcaster uh, Brainstorm. Yes. I like keeping my mana up so I can use it at their end of the turn, make them react to it. Uh, if they do something funky, you know, even if they get rid of my Force of Will, what I can do is I can Spell Pierce, uh, which will cost two, and then I can play Snapcaster again and Spell Pierce something else for two more. So uh, that's also a line. But it's not going to be anymore. Okay, that's actually a really good play. So, uh, spell piercing doesn't doing anything. Isn't doing anything. Uh, I don't want to force a will this because I like the cards in my hand. This can be. This is the point where Narset can actually do pretty well because remember they have faithless looting. This kind of turns off Grizzlebrand brand for a turn, so that's not bad as well. So I didn't want to force that. Okay, and they. It, Ironically enough, they bend a Faithless Looting, so that means they have creatures in their hand, but they don't have any reanimate spells, and what they want to do is cast this so they can get their fatties into the grave and hopefully draw more reanimate spells. That's kind of what I'm putting them on, because <clears throat> uh, you usually don't see this. I uh, usually just put the creature. Otherwise, I think they might be playing around Surgical, so uh, I believe this opponent was pretty smart and intelligent based upon, you know, the cards I could have, uh, like I said, because usually you don't see games like this where you wait it out. It sounds like they're going to be going for, you know, the perfect time to maybe get me to discard and then so on and so forth. Uh, not the greatest cards in the world, however, uh, let's see what we can do here. So we have... Let's see. I don't remember exactly what I did. I know I like blue cards here, so I believe they didn't have... What's the word? They didn't have a uh, card in the bin, so I didn't care too much about swords. So I believe it was like swords and stoneforge. Yes. Then if I want to, I can always play stoneforge. Let's attack first. And here, since they didn't have a ton going on... Actually opted for Narset, uh, and the reason for that is because next turn they're probably going to be flashing this back, which costs one, two, three. Uh, I will still have Spell Pierce mana up, plus I'll have the ability to get obviously a uh, creature card back, non-creature card back. And I know I, I'm at least getting one because remember I put Swords to Plowshares on top. Uh, there's some nifty tricks when it comes to Narset. Unfortunately, they haven't come up a ton, but if you play Ponders and Brainstorms before, a lot of times you can just go for that value and make sure you leave a non-creature card on top, for example. Because if I did it the other way around and I had uh, Swords in my hand and Stoneforge, uh, the fact of the matter is if those other three cards are blanks, then I don't get a card and I do want the card advantage in this uh, specific scenario. Pretty much almost any time, unless I'm digging for something specific. I thought they were going to red blast this. I was wrong. Let's do this. Okay, so, um, like, if this was something random and I had kept Stoneforge there, I wouldn't have gotten a card at all. And Swords actually now is very powerful, considering the fact if they want to get Grizzlebrand, they're going to have to wait a turn. So let's take Swords. We can't cast uh, Councils at the moment, so it's a very easy spot or choice. 
So I did understand that they're going to be pretty much, uh, they're going to play this card, they're going to lose it, and then they're just not going to draw two cards, and then they're going to discard two more. Uh, but I felt like, even if I felt that they had uh, cards in their hand, it was as if they really wanted to use this, and I felt this was a great time to spell pierce, so I did decide to spell pierce this. I understand that, you know, they're not going to be... Uh, what's the word, drawing any cards, but I feel they needed to get cards in their bin because uh, they were, I guess, I don't know if they were playing. It was a very weird play pattern. I wish I could explain it, but uh, uh, just from watching, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Either way. There I probably should have used Narset first in case they wanted to get uh, fancy and red blast it. So that's a little something to keep in mind. Okay, well, I mean, not the worst in the world, right? So here, I don't want to play True Name simply because uh, I can pitch it to Force. Uh, I don't, I'm not too crazy about hard casting a Force. I don't mind pitching this. It's not going to be a big deal. So here, I want to play Stoneforge, get some more action going. I did take out Jit, so we're just getting Batter Skull. Okay, and we have... I mean, there is a reason to possibly force of will this. By doing that, we get to pitch true name when we get to hide our hand, which if you have, if you think that has any significance, uh, because usually if you force something like this, that means you're protecting something else. But in this scenario, I didn't mind them uh, taking that and losing two life. Sure. <laughs> Out of all the creatures, <laughs> this is the one they get. Okay. I'm like, don't do it. Oh, unmask. So what'd they pitch? Another grizzle brand? Okay, so they're going to take my swords here. And they're going to go draw. <laughs> All right, opponent. Just when I thought you were playing it very well. But ironically enough, despite the fact, like, I just don't think reanimator players see this enough. Like, am I the only one who keeps Narset in against reanimator? Because I really like playing that long controlling game. You've seen, if you've seen my other reanimator matchups, uh, I haven't lost to it in a long time. But what happens is usually fight over stuff. It stalls out, becomes a top deck war. Uh, and this becomes very valuable. I know it's not going to work out like that every time, but it is also a blue card, which is very significant in this. It also makes my swords much better, like exactly in this specific scenario, because this is usually their number one target. So uh, usually... I'd say if the player was realizing that this was going to happen, they would have not drawn seven. And of course, I would just plow it next turn. But, uh, you know, sure. Don't mind that at all. Let's swords this. And I do not want to, let's see, one, two, three, four. So I don't want to bring in, uh, unfortunately, I don't have another planes. That's the only one to get Tundra. So we're attacking here. So let's look at this. Uh, well, I don't, there's just no reason to play True Name because if they get like Anime Dead Exhum, actually there's nothing uh, in the bin. Well, that's always good. So if I had played True Name here, then it would have been three, four, five, six. It would have been two turns. Uh, but next turn, if I attack with Snapcaster and keep my mana open, that'll be two. And then next turn, which I bring in Batter Skull, then they would take four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so either way, it's going to be a two turn clock. And by not playing True Name here, I have Force of Will to pitch to it, and of course I can bring in Batter Skull the end of next turn, so the play I made in that specific scenario seemed like the correct one. Let's see what you got. And they got nothing. Whew, another interesting one against Reanimator. So, like I said, if you play against some like super veteran who's like the best player, like what's his name? E.W. E Landon, I know he plays Reanimator a ton. He's certainly not gonna be drawing seven into Narset. But like I say, this can buy you time. It can buy you card advantage, plus it's blue. And this is one of those matchups where there's usually like two or three or four cards that are kind of iffy. It's kind of like between this and Jace. Uh, and I personally prefer this over Jace, as you can see. Uh, it really helped with that game, finding more cards. And of course, when they draw into it, that's always fun as well. Another one for the good guys. That was Stoneblade against Reanimator. Two to one. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.